Good morning, Pastor Brian here. Today we will be reading Psalm 49, a part of our Psalm a Day and Daily Bible Study series. And as we read the psalm together, I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Feel free to follow along, uh, listen along, uh, follow in your own translation, whatever you find the most helpful way to get the most out of your psalm each day. Let's read the psalm right now. Listen to this, all you people. Listen closely, all you citizens of the world, people of every kind, rich and poor alike. My mouth speaks wisdom. My heart's meditation is full of insight. I will pay close attention to a proverb. I will explain my riddle on the lyre. Why should I be afraid in times of trouble? when the wrong doing of my bullies engulfs me? Those people who trust in their fortunes and boast of their fantastic wealth? Wealth? It can't save a single person. It can't pay a life's ransom price to God. The price to save someone's life is too high. Wealth will never be enough. No one can live forever without experiencing the pit. Everyone knows that the wise die too, just like foolish and stupid people do, all of them leaving their fortunes to others. The graves are their eternal homes, the place they live for all generations, even if they had counties named after them. People won't live any longer because of wealth. They're just like the animals that pass away. That's how it goes, for those who are foolish as well as for those who follow their lead, pleased with their talk. Like sheep, they're headed straight for the grave. Death will be their shepherd. But those who do right in their hearts will rule over them come morning. Their forms wasting away in the grave rather than having some dignified residence. But God will save my life from the power of the grave because he will take me. Don't be overly impressed when someone becomes rich, their house swelling to fantastic proportions, because when they die, they won't take any of it with them. Their fantastic things won't accompany them down under. Though they consider themselves blessed during their lives and even thank you when you deal well with them. They too will join the ancestors who've gone ahead. They too will never see the light again. Wealthy people? They just don't understand they're just like the animals that pass away. That is the end of Psalm 49. Uh, after being so excited of multiple uh, praise songs in a row, we get a different kind of psalm today. So think about what kind of psalm you think this one might be. And one of the things that uh, the psalm focuses on, and so because of that is what stuck out to me, is all about wealth. And, you know, uh, one of the things that we can do in our lives is we can seek and pursue wealth and we can try to not just seek and pursue it, but do our best to accumulate and hold on to it. Uh, but this psalm points out that just like anybody else, the wealthy die. Just like anybody else, the wealth doesn't go with them. Uh, just like anybody else, whoever's supposed to inherit it after them, inherits it after them. Which is not a terrible thing. It's a good thing for, you know, your children. But the whole idea of accumulating wealth to be wealthy, uh, you know, to, to swell up your house as uh, the text uh, points out or phrases, is, phrases it that way, you know, is what does it really truly accomplish in this life? Can it really help? Or is God the one who, who helps us? Is God the one that, that provides more than just the material things in this life? And is not friendship, is not love and, and, and family, you know, is the, 
as the psalm rightly points out in verse 7, wealth, it can't save a single person. It can't pay a life's ransom price to God. The price to save someone's life is too high. And, you know, I, you know, it does talk about, you know, saving a life, but I think about it also in terms of just relationships, you know. Are we really going to to spend our time focusing on wealth and possessions instead of the people around us, the people that we love and care for, the people that God has placed in our lives and that God uh, loves just as much as we do? And so we need to think about and prioritize what is most important. One of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther, and, you know, I never remember the exact quote, but, uh, you know, he's quoted as saying, all of the things that I placed in my hands, I have lost. And side note, Luther lost a lot of things in his life, including children. But then he says, but everything that I placed in God's hands, that I still possess. Things like love and joy and peace and and his salvation. Uh, you know, he doesn't say those things, obviously, in that, that little quote there. But, but those are the things that we place in God's hands. Those are the true treasures in heaven, as Jesus talks about. So those are the things that stuck out to me. That is where my mind went. But what stuck out to you? Where did your mind go? What did you like? What didn't you like? Write it down. Share it with a friend. Share it with us. As always, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. God bless. And I hope you can join us tomorrow.